It is the morning of the 28th, April 2016. I'm Dana Durnford, uh, your host, nuclearproctologist.org. A little disoriented this morning. And we are live streaming five days a week, 10.30 a.m. Pacific uh, Canada time, British Columbia time. And the idea is to bring awareness about Fukushima and have that conversation about Fukushima and to educate people on Fukushima. And one of the topics today is a Sophie, Sophia small storm. And hopefully we can educate her. Um, I'm probably not helping that by calling her a nu nuclear disinfo agent. But I can explain that, I can justify making that statement. And when I say educate her, hopefully bring her over onto the light instead of the dark where she's now hanging out to. And I know that's hard to wrap your mind around, and so bear with me as we get through the camera craziness this morning. Doing it again. I'm going to move that a little bit closer because that's giving me a hard time. That's so awesome. It's so awesome to be able to do stuff like this too. Come on, camera. Give me a break this morning. We've never had that problem, have we? What did I do wrong this morning, I wonder? Let's go over and see how much luck I got with the other camera. Huh? Are you doing okay, huh? You know, it seems a bit better. Nice and clean shot. While we're over here, let's say good morning to everybody in the comment section. I'm plugged in. Yeah, plugged in. Let's move me over so we can actually see me in the camera section. Good morning, Pam. Checks and balances. Gabriel. Shani. Amthurst. Shani Ken. Nova. Uh, and the conversation just opens up as I go live and there was no preambles this morning I was late getting up and running Andreas uh, did I miss anybody good morning everyone I'm just making sure Tree Wolf I said hello to everybody Elaine hugs for everybody don't mind me Thomas Ackerman Yeah, great expo on the old poster child of nuclear freaks, which is dots we done yesterday. We finally responded because I finally looked at it and realized how maniacal that guy was. I'm really tired, burnt out. We're doing this five days a week, 10.30 a.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time. And so I might as well probably start thinking about doing it seven days a week, maybe two shows a day or something, three shows a day, one hour shows five shows a day maybe I don't know and find more sites um, we'll be streaming back on YouTube in six days so that's pretty cool that camera there let's come back over here to this camera then you get your act together get on the freaking show hey the camera cleared itself up <laughs> and so now I gotta come back over there and play the video <laughs> Hang on, beer. Takes five minutes to warm up every morning. That's all we can do. This is Sophie Smallstorm, Strawstorm. I smurf up so much, so many times. Hang on a second. Now you want to go watch that original video, Dana. And that's not it, dear Dana. It's in that folder. I should have had that ready. I did, I thought, but hey. Uh, Sage of Quay Radio. Sophia Small Storm. Marine Life Die Off. Is it Fukushima or the Navy? That's the video up on YouTube. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. So let's play. I'm going to play it on the external laptop. And so the audio is going to be a little tiny bit. I'll adjust it on the floor here. It's loud enough, but it's not. I didn't import it. I only woke up like an hour ago. It's been a stressful couple of days. Yesterday was really stressful for me. And I know people personally who have cried tears because they have seen shivering, sickly looking seal, seals and sea lions on the beach, and you can count their ribs, and they think it's from Fukushima. It's not from Fukushima. Whoa! It's the cascade effect. Take out their 
Now the cascade effect, she's blaming it on the Navy. This is about Fukushima didn't kill the ocean, the Navy did. And so bear with me and listen to what she has to say. Predator. That's what I've done. I've listened to a number of her videos. I, I had an open mind. I'm not jumping to conclusions. I'm not just coming out and, and blah, 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 blah. Bear with me. Listen to what we got to talk about, please. If you're not familiar with this or if you're part of that, uh, you believe that what Sophie's saying is true, please uh, listen to another narrative. And there are going to be too many of them, and there's not enough fish because you look under them on the marine chain. There isn't enough stuff for them to eat. So some of them are going to die. So Sophia, the question. So the seals in California that are starving to death and are emaciated, they died because there's too much competition is what she's saying. Eh? <laughs> and she's going to explain why it's not Fukushima. It becomes all these people that are involved in marine biology, all of these PhDs and these scientists and these researchers, I mean, don't they know this? You don't hear anything about it. It's like you and I, you know about it, and thank God you know about it, and we can get this communicated out. I guess the reason why I'm, I'm angry about this is that... Angry. That's a strange word. How come... <laughs> I, I, I know the answer to this, so I'm so so this is a rhetorical question, but this is never disseminated out to the population. People are, people are led to believe that something from Fukushima is creating this, when in fact, it has nothing to do with Fukushima. It's very disturbing to me that there are people who are in positions of knowledge and knowing that allow the lies or allow the deception to prevail. And they don't a single time mention that there's three full meltdowns. They don't do any comparisons like Chernobyl was one third the size and the 30% meltdown and stopped after 10 days was using graphite versus uh, Fukushima has three full meltdowns. Each reactor is three times the size. Each reactor was 100% meltdown. Each reactor is still in a chain reaction. Uh, each reactor core is unknown. Chernobyl has an elephant foot. And Chernobyl got a sarcophagus over it because the chain reaction stopped. They can't put a sarcophagus over it. Fukushima, they'll lose the site. They gotta try to control every aspect of what's happening there that they can get to send the homeless, the destitute, and the Victim Society, and think of Chernobyl where they sent in Harvard, Yale, Berkeley, MIT, Stanford, Oxford, all the shakers and movers on the planet, but they never sent none of those to Fukushima. None of them, not a single one of them. But year after year after year, they went to Chernobyl. Chernobyl, of course, uh, wasn't mixed oxide fuel, MOX fuel. But anyway, let's keep going and talk, uh, so we can talk about this after. This is just a snippet, um, and I showed you uh, uh, video earlier. You can go watch it yourself. Okay, you, let me tell you something else. I'll put a link on YouTube when it does it. Please hold the seat of your Repost chair with it. both hands. Do you know what cesium-137 is? Well, I, I know it's an element, yes. Yes, so it's one of the dangerous isotopes. And cesium-137 is a tracer. It's a tracer. Iodine is a tracer and strontium is a tracer. And what that means is thousands of the other elements are now present. If you found that, all the other elements are present. And cesium, they do a whole body counts because cesium radiates right out of your body. Now your body is being attacked all the time. Uh, if you got cesium in it with white blood cells attacking that little atom, that's one ten thousandth a millionth of a meter. Where you can put two million on the head of a needle, you can't see it, but that's two million cancers distributed out. So it radiates through your whole body. Imagine what it does to phytoplankton or pods or like the food chain itself, the microscopic world. And you know, we've done 260 days on this coastline and covered 15,000 miles on a Fukushima expedition for life. We show an extinction event. Now what she's saying is that Fukushima didn't kill the marine life, but what she negated, and Yoshi Samatsu uh, sent me an email this morning where he sent me the reply he had to her and he asked her to explain how did the Navy sonars kill all the uh, marine life in the tidal pools along the coastline of British Columbia which is what we studied for 260 days we posted that documentation up at the nuclear proctologist and the other 4.2 million species didn't receive the coastline and that a glass of salt water had a billion creatures that's also missing so she she appears to be a 100% apologist uh, with the Navy, connected to the Navy for the nuclear industry coming out and bludgeoning the Navy, accusing the Navy to, because that's how powerful the nuclear industry is. 
There's a million corporations depending upon the nuclear, but think about how much money nuclear brings to each plant just for security. Because the terrorists might get it and wreck a city. But if it's released in huge volumes, according to her, it's not harmful. But uh, hang on, let's play through it. It gets it's three released minutes. from the process called fission, uranium fission, right? 137 When you detonate about. a nuclear bomb. Most of them were weighing five pounds that she's talking about. Five pounds. Now, it can suck up a million pounds of rocks at the surface if it detonates and atomize and aerosol and ionizing and radiate that million pounds of rocks. And that's no different than the stuff that came out of the chain reaction in the context of it now has a new uh, atomic number added to it, a new atomic weight from that bombardment from the detonation. So in other words, each of those, are uh, that million pounds is atomized, aerosoled and ionized and radiated. Very dangerous stuff all of a sudden. When that million pounds was, was a few seconds before that, okay, it wouldn't hurt you. Or you have a nuclear explosion like Fukushima. You're going to get she iodine 131, part, which is an isotope of iodine. Iodine 131. Right, listen to that. It's very unstable and very heavy in the proton. They're created in the chain reaction, all the elements, but it's a tracer. So it meant the other couple of thousand that we know about and the 10,000 that are classified uh, radionuclides, isotopes, inside the atoms are also there in present also. And I'll explain it to you in a minute. Now, for one second, she's talking about iodine-131 now. There's 10 times more 132, but that got a five-day half-life, 50-day uh, lifespan. Uh, but that ionizes and radiates your thyroid glands nine times more effectively. There's uh, 30 times more iodine-133. There's 31 times more iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life that came from fissionable products. It's not benign or innocuous or harmless or something like that. It's from a chain reaction. Everything from a chain reaction was made from uranium. You put uranium in, all this stuff come out. You never put iodine in and then came out with radioactive iodine. But that's how an apologist confuses you where they say it's only got an eight-day half-life. And forget about all the other radioactive isotopes and the ratio that they're created. Neutrons and neutron mix. So they're, and they're also... They're not equal. They don't have a balance of protons and neutrons, so they're like, ugh, they jostle around all the time. They're a tracer. And they release energy. That's what radioactivity is. They're dangerous. Is. So when you get iodine-131, it has a half-life. You heard this term, right? Right. That half-life is only eight days. That half-life is only, is only, it's only eight days. Iodine-131. So there have been many, many, many eight-day periods since 2011. When many, many, many eight-day periods since 2011. See, that's a slick way because she's, she's just lagging on that when you're putting uranium and plutonium into the reactor, not iodine and not cesium. The biggest production coming out of there is curium, which acts just like plutonium, americium, neptunium. And Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute showed that the smallest male killed the beagle dogs and beagle puppies for 35 years at Loveless in New Mexico, right? Loveless Respiratory Research Institute. But there's thousands of these Loveless uh, doctors out there killing animals with man-made ionizing radiation. Vicious cancers, all the dogs. And let me just, we'll, come, we'll talk about that after I show you some of those studies after on the beagle dogs and beagle puppies. Let's finish off. She's only got like um, a little over a minute left. She might happen. But two other... Let's revisit that last sentence. So there have been many, many, many eight-day periods since 2011 when Fukushima happened. And there's only uh, 10 half-lives, therefore, times eight is 80 days. That meant it was gone. By proxy, by saying many, 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 many eight-day periods gone since 2011. But two other things that get released when uranium is broken down is cesium-137 and strontium-90. They are both tracers. Right? Cesium goes right for the muscles in the heart, and uh, strontium goes into sequesters into your bone, goes to your pelvis, mutates, creates mutated stem cells. Those isotopes are also very unsafe for biological life. Yeah, but there's 2,000 other ones right away that we know about. Because These are tracers. They masquerade in their in their molecular shape. The Your body thinks of it as potassium for the cesium, and and it thinks of it as calcium for the strontium. 
So strontium acts like calcium, goes right for free for your bones, for your mass. And a lot of the isotopes will get sequestered into your muscles and your organs. And your heart is a muscle, right? Plus it's always moving the blood through your system with the radioactive isotopes. And that's why there's a vicious, so many vicious heart attacks and people dying when the plume originally came through. There was 20, 22,000 or something more heart attacks in that little short period than it was any other year in that period. Body, I always say, is biochemically blind. Jet streams take three days to get here. So if it sees something that looks like something, it takes it. Same reason that, you know, little fishies in the ocean scarf down um, this stuff called nurdles, plastic debris, because they think it looks like zooplankton. They don't know. Right to, pl so, right, right to plastic now. <laughs> anything but Fukushima. So, okay, so anything but Fukushima... Now, they do that many times where it's not Fukushima, right? It's, and what they're blaming on is the Navy sonar testing has killed 600 species of algae throughout the coastline of North America. It's killing all the birds. They're all starving it uh, throughout North America because of uh, sonar testing. That's basically what she's saying. Uh, so, it appears that uh, Sophia is not who she claims she is. And that she's not gullible because she does excellent research and everything else. How come she doesn't bother mentioning there's three melted reactors in Japan and they're right on the ocean. And that a gram of this stuff is a million watts and it produces more atoms in every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. And that an atom can give you a cancer in 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years down the road. But that there's 1,800 diseases will manifest before autoimmune deficiencies, injuries, 1,800 just about 1800 that are recorded okay so bear with me and and uh, let me bring up Gilmetti for a second so we can have a minor on Gilmetti Gilmetti uh, Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute you'll see it up in the top left hand corner there uh, he's got all kinds of studies, all kinds of accolades. He's been around for a long time. He had the 2001 Distinguished uh, Scientist, Scientist Award. And I better bring that up on that other one. Hang on. I'll bring up that other camera. Er, and we'll bring up this one here. Because this is a wide angle kind of uh, showing the studies of Gilmetti, 1989. Now, he killed beagle dogs and beagle puppies. But one of his studies here is showing you to look at the abstract. Curium isotopes are major byproduct in radiated nuclear fuel and comprise a significant fraction of the alpha emitting radionuclide inventory. Uh, but look at the top biokinetic model inhaled uh, cesium compounds, curium compounds rather, in dogs. Curium has many daughters. Uh, dogs all die. So he done all kinds of studies on dogs and curium acted like plutonium. And of course this study here of 144 beagle dogs Look at your third sentence. Tumors in lung, skeleton, and liver occurred beginning about three years after exposure. And bone tumors found in 93 dogs were the most common cause of death. Lung tumors found in 46 dogs were the second most common cause of death. Liver tumors, etc., etc. Look at the last two sentences. Now, he's done 95, 94 of these studies over 35 years that we know about, that we, that we collected on them. But there's thousands of these. Also, taking into consideration when it comes to the ocean, uh, ratios pre Fukushima, pre uh, Chernobyl, pre Three Mile Island, or you know even around that period, of the, how much isotopes to say tritium was two to five becquerels per uh, liter per hundred liter per cubic meter, which is a thousand liters in the ocean, uh, right around the world in rivers and lakes in different countries and different continents. Uh, these studies are well known how much was there pre-Fukushima and after Fukushima. And there's also studies showing, and wait for it, risk of leukemia just from being exposed to tritium, which is H3, which is radiated water, you come in contact with fissionable products, and carbon-14, you can't uh, filter any of this, of course. They tell you they can, but you can't. Okay, so think about leukemias and, and bone tumors by short-lived bone-seeking radionucleoids. But okay, now I'm gonna bring that together to you very quick here, if you give me a moment. Think about the new drinking water standards here in Canada for tritium, 7,000 becquels a liter, but what did I just show you pre-Fukushima? There was only two to four becquels a liter and that uh, those studies were shown back then that that much could cause 
cancers and did in children, leukemias, and that there's six times more leukemias in, 22% uh, more leukemias in children living around nuclear power plants, and that there's six times more breast cancer. In one sense, it's too bad that Sophia doesn't live close to a nuclear power plant, so she would actually get it and understand it. She went to read Dr. Raymond Gilmady's studies, she might actually get it. She might grow a uh, soul or a conscience or something like that. Let me fix that. Okay. Well, where's the point you're trying to make, Dana, on top of all of that? So tritium in the water. What was the point? I wanted? There was another point I wanted to make on top of this. I forgot now. Not that it matters, I guess, but... Now, think about Seth Dorn. CBS. At Unit 4. Okay, that's pretty weird, right? He's saying he's inside of a building we know don't exist. And I'll show you what I mean here. This is Unit 4 coming up. Now, Fukushima got hit with a 9.0 earthquake. This went through the whole country, not just the nuclear power plants. The reactors really did blow up, Sophia. The reactors really did melt down, Sophia. The reactor 1 is at three times the size of Chernobyl, Sophia. It's 100%. Gone. And they were storing the reactor cores every two years on the roof, five million pounds, Sophia. And a, and a gram is a million watts, Sophia. And that uh, unit two is the same application as what is all gone. It's confirmed. Unit three, I don't, you don't need to be a genius to actually understand that, do you? Unit four, do you need to be a genius to understand that? Well, that's the building that Seth Dorn said he was in. It looks like that. Here's Seth Dorn again. Say he's inside of, look at that beautiful building, is actually right there. That's the building, that's the official picture. Miles O'Brien. Before we left, they carefully scanned all of us and checked the dosimeter. He was at Unit 4, and I'm not going to play the whole video, but he pretends he's in the same thing. Here's TEPCO. TEPCO shows that one, right? And that's, that's what they claim Unit 4 looks like, but here's Unit 4. <laughs> And what Sophia is doing to you is the same thing. Sophia is claiming that these forecasts are not real and they don't mean anything. That uh, Australia, the Norwegian Institute for Air Research, you got the Euro Project in uh, Riche, uh, the University of Cologne, showing the modeling just from iodine and cesium, not including the thousands of radioactive isotopes. You got um, France's Institute for Nuclear Radiation. Sophia basically wants you to think the reactors survived and everything else was destroyed, same as Seth Dorn showed you that, when in reality it looks like that. Right? Because that's how that, that's the reality, isn't it? Here's TEPCO showing you a and, fake uh, Unit 4 fuel pool. You gotta watch it because I can't jump ahead because I chopped it out during, from the one hour footage. I didn't edit it and then import it and because of the software that I'm using. It's, I can't fast forward to show you, so we have to suffer it out. He's talking about the wonderful transformation of Unit 4. It went from magic to magic. They still haven't fixed Chernobyl, but yet all of a sudden, that is Unit 4. Now, that building, look at it. This was a month ago. TEPCO was telling you that. Sophie would probably do him in a heartbeat. But this is what Unit 4 actually looks like. Right? So they faked it, just like Seth Dorn, just like TEPCO. Just like Miles O'Brien, right? None of them are inside of that building. Inside of that building, do you think inside of that building looks like that? Because I can't help you if you don't. Nobody can help you, trust me. <laughs> Nothing can help anybody if you think that the official story or Sophia has any kind of... Look, Sophia... <coughs> Hang on. So what we done was, we took a, this dinky, we, we took a hole, we put the cabin on and all the equipment on and all the lights and radars and antennas and, and emergency beacons. And we went out for 260 days and we ran head first into that coastline through unimaginable misery, through unimaginable, unimaginable odds. We had the whole nuclear industry attacking us relentlessly, demonizing me and vilifying me constantly. And all I want to do is go out and take pictures of the coastline. I don't know how come I become such a bad person for wanting to do something like that, or what made people think that I must be a terrible person, because I wanted to go out and and look at the entire coastline independently, 
because I dove this for 14,000 hours. I was the skipper over a dozen commercial dive vessels. I've worked every industry in the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean of Canada, and I was the skipper of all those vessels and the lead diver on both oceans when I was working those operations. And I'm well known. And so I don't lie. So do you think that radio sonar, this is what the coastline looks like now. These are the picture I took. This is pre-Fukushima. Now the whole coastline would look like that, not just that spot I'm showing you, Louise Narles, as a, as a, as something everybody can verify. This was the people come from all over the world year round to come to that one spot there because it looked like that, because it looked like that, because it looked like that, because it, like it looked like that right up until Fukushima. It looked like that and that everywhere you went, no matter where you went, it was a thriving, unimaginable, unbelievable, inconceivable unimaginable, dead, just un just incredible. You could eat, pick up food anywhere you were. Eat, eat, any time, any day of that week. Go wherever you wanted to. Eat whatever you wanted to. You can find all these pictures on Google by typing in uh, Louise Nurls, uh, Queen Charlotte Islands, or formerly, or Haida Gwaii. You'll see the name when you go on Queen Charlotte Islands, Haida Gwaii. You can't spell it. And then type in tidal pools, tidal zones, different search terms for those, and you'll find all these pictures. These are all from that one spot. There would be 500 of them per square meter. Now, the pictures I've done, four years later, three and a half years later, these pictures you're looking at now, it's all gone. No longer will it look like that. The four million other species uh, didn't receive the coastline. That's Louise Narrows. This is one of the most covered spots in Canada. Is now naked. Was that radar testing, Sophia, huh? Was it, Sophia? Or was that radioactive fallout washing back down from the mountains to the coastline? Which is what the clouds, the rain clouds do. They wash back down to the coastline. I dove this same spot, this whole coastline of British Columbia. I dove that year after year. Sophia? And I can assure you, radar didn't do that. Sounders didn't do that. The Navy didn't wipe out the 5,600 species in the tidal zones. And so the die-offs when the baby seals and the baby birds will come ashore, well, if they can't find the sardines and the herring and the anchovies and the krill and the shrimp and everything else and the squid, they'll come ashore. And then they'll eat all of that. They'll eat all of that. They'll eat all of that. Same thing with the birds. The birds will come ashore and they'll eat everything that's there, yeah? Well, that bird came, never came ashore. He was right over my head. There was nothing for him to eat. And so all the seals and sea lions and animals and mammals, when they can't find nothing in the ocean, they come to the coastline looking for something to eat that don't exist no more. Yeah? That's not radar and sounder, Sophia. What planet are you from? Why are you doing this to people? Why don't you bother mention that there is three melter reactors in Japan, Sophia? Why do you have the arrogance... And, and the tenacity to do all the research on the Navy, but nothing on the reactors. Where is your moral compass? How can you ignore an extinction event in the Pacific Ocean and make money at your website constantly by telling everybody it's not Fukushima? Not bother to mention that there's three reactors. I only mentioned iodine with an eight-day half-life. I mentioned cesium in the passing and strontium in the passing. But do well on the eight-day half-life over... A long extended period. See, like everything, I listened to a number of your videos and you didn't at any time clarify how many melted reactors are the significance of Chernobyl or the significance. Unless at that stage, you'll just repeat United Nations and Unsclear and the puke machine. You did mention Woods Hole, didn't you? The notorious, like 911, who said the dust was good at ground zero? That was uh, Woods Hole. After BP accident, who said that that it was safe to eat the seafood deer? That was Woods Hole. After Fukushima, who said there was no radionuclides in North America and none to be found in the ocean till last year? That was Woods Hole. Who tried to control the narrative from all of those events? Woods Hole. Who said the burn pits were fine down there in Iraq and Afghanistan? Think about that one. Ten... To get 10,000 Taliban, you got millions dead, millions missing, millions of refugee camps, millions unaccounted for, and over 5 million orphans just in Afghanistan to get 10,000 Taliban. You've done the same thing in Iraq, Libya, 
There's 13 million refugees now in Syria. What? You get 10,000 gangbangers. Right? And so by coming out and saying the Navy is killing the animals that we do see, and that Fukushima is not an issue, and then keep shoving that down everybody's throat about the Navy, and, and not tell the people the truth, uh, is highly suspect. I don't think you're stupid. I don't think you're naive or gullible. I've listened to quite a few of your presentations and or your uh, interviews, and you don't come across as uh, stupid. But you do come across as deceptive and deceitful and misrepresenting the documentation. How can we have an extinction event in our tidal zones based upon sonar? And you need to come out and apologize. You need to get on board. You need to understand that this is not a game anymore, that those, those easy paychecks you made doing that helped seal the fate for 8 million species on this planet. Helped hide it away just long enough that no one could do, ever do anything. That everybody who done it can escape from prosecution or justice. And that the victims, you got to think about all the victims you're creating of people who are eating the fish because they listened to you and said, oh, Fukushima's not killing the fish, therefore it's okay to eat the fish. You're responsible for those people that listened to you and went ahead and ate fish. That's murder. You murdered those, their loved ones, their children who ate the fish. It was you, Sophia, you, and your host who didn't challenge you a single time. It was too easy. A shocking, see? But that is your legacy. You can never escape that. And whether you see the people that, that you killed, because you won't, does that mean you didn't kill them because they took your advice and went ahead and ate the radioactive fish and died a lot quicker than they would have? And then they had to liquidate their assets because of the vicious cancers? And they had to cry alongside the hospital beds of their children dying with those cancers while you walked around with a bank account? Why, why everybody said, oh, you're so great, Sophia. Why well, you got all these accolades because you hoodwinked everybody? Because you wouldn't tell them about Fukushima. That's the people you are. That's what a nuclear PR firm is. That's what a public relation, public relation firm does. Is they murder people by covering up what happened and convincing people that nothing happened. That's murder. That's murder, see? And you don't have any kind of a, you don't think about that. You're not going to get to see those people eating the fish. You won't know who they are. Therefore, it doesn't impact you personally in your life, and you can do it that way. You can take a paycheck for it, because you did. We know you did. There's no doubt about that. You're not some random person. You're out there propagating that. You've got a website dedicated to it, and you're shoving it down everybody's throat, and you're getting traction, because that's part of the paradigm. All oh, the stuff you're seeing dying is because of the sonar. Nothing to do with Fukushima. By the way, I don't know how to eat the half-life. How can it be Fukushima, stupid? Yeah, but don't bother telling them it's 2000, that that's a tracer. And it's 2,000 other radioactive isotopes. We proved an extinction event. Do you get any idea how bad, disgusting, and tormenting that is every day? That people like you exist? You won't look at this documentation. You won't look at this stuff here. You won't look at Smithsonian showing studies. The 200 miles of the coastline last year was naked. Therefore, all the urchins are gone for the rest of the ocean. Don't, don't put that into perspective. We've done the whole coastline, and we show an extinction event. We show an extinction event. That's me traveling back to the Charlottes after blowing up under rocks in a hurricane. The crap beating out of me. $6,000 worth of damage. And a week later... Pulled out and headed back out on the ocean. 260 days later, we had five expeditions. One of them were five months. And everything was missing symmetrically throughout the 15,000 miles of coastline that we covered. 15,000 miles of that coastline. That means nothing. Does that, does that mean anything to you, Sophia? Or Sage, Radio, whatever you call yourselves. Does it mean anything to you that they're faking... Unit 4, they say it looks like that, but it looks like that. No, but that boy, that, that boy's you a lot of, uh, a lot of liberty, a lot of freedom, and people, it's shocking, you know. We get the beers are starving to debt, right? We, you know, I played that stuff the other day where all 3,000 in the Antarctic are like that, they're emaciated. No, Dana, that's the radar and the sounder testing in the Navy, Dana. Yeah, do you know what they used to look like? They used to look like that. 
Sophia. Not they used to look like that. Not like that. That that beer, Sophia, was chased for seven hundred miles. It couldn't it never ate. It had the deepest and longest dive. It was starved to death. Like everything else though, they're starving they're starving to death because there's nothing to eat. It's starving to death because the basis of the food chain was destroyed. And so it's kinda hard for people to wrap their mind outside of I'm yelling at Sophia. Let me bring up some art way to articulate what this radiation is actually. Like. What what I mean by that. So here's weapons testing. West Coast, this is what they say Fukushima is one cubic meter. This is in Goddard, scumbag. Okay, but he done this to deceive you, just like her. So he shows you four back rolls from Fukushima. You got any idea how ludicrous that number is? Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs in 10 days. When you think about weapons testing, think about how many bombs they actually set off. And then think about how Chernobyl lasted 10 days was equal to 400. But Ch Chernobyl, one third aside, Chernobyl. Okay. So all the weapon testing combined, which is nothing compared to Chernobyl, is 70 becquels. So you see, if the whole ocean looked like that, all the eggs and larvae and small fries, just because you see that little spot there, if I have it in me, and there's a Geiger counter right here, it can read it. And if anything is swimming between here, it gets blasted with radiation every second, 1,440 minutes a day. Okay. Now here's potassium 40 coming up. Hang on. So potassium 40 is harmless. It's called homeostasis. Your body's full of it. Your clothing is full of it. Everything around you. It, it only goes one ten thousandth of a second lifespan away from itself. Or one ten thousandth of a millimeter away from itself. It has no energy. It can't mutate fruit flies. But if that was man-made and you just had 70 or 10 back walls or one back wall and you got it in your body, it, that one back wall, that one atom will pull it of your body. And so snapping apart your DNA and your chromosomes, your body will attack it for decades with white blood cells. But you're eating it in an unimaginable amount. You are breeding 10 hot particles a day. Like the models I showed you, the radioactive fallout was an invisible snowstorm right across the Pacific Ocean and right across the continents. That never stopped. An invisible snowstorm. So potassium-40 might look like that in a depiction, but that's nature. Everything on the planet is acclimated to that through genetic superior selection. That's why we exist. All our clothing is the same way. If I put potassium-40 in my clothing, it'll off-gas it, but, but you can't get any more in your body. Whatever you got, that's what you got. And if you eat, and you do, food and drink water with potassium-40 in it, that's good for you that you need that, but if there's a single man made, there's sequesters in your organs, in your muscles, in your bones. But think about how each reactor in Japan, now a gram it is, produces more atoms than every grain of sand on all the beaches on the planet. A gram is a million watts. A gram in nature is nothing. No watts. So a gram of potassium, if you refined it, is a... Um, is 120, 160,000 uh, atoms of particles, I guess is a better way to put it. A gram of man made is uh, 88 times 37 billion in a curry. A gram, uh, which is, would have 88 curries, and a curry is 27, I'm sorry, a petabec was 27,000. But a gram would have uh, 88 curries. And so that's 88 times 37 billion ionizing radiating atoms. And so you can give cancer to 37 billion uh, 88 times. But it takes 10, 20, 30, 40 years to manifest, diagnose, and show up. Then before that shows up, there's 1,800 diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, adrenaline gland, thyroid gland problems. Uh, like death by these injuries, very vicious injuries where your family has to care for the people affected with it. There's six times more breast cancer around 15 miles within a nuclear power plant. And so what we ended up with was you're looking at 12,000 becquels of, of natural in, in nature and they say, well, because there's 
12,000 in nature, right? And there's only a couple of man made, therefore there's nothing to worry about. Because there's a whole lot more, Dana. It doesn't work that way. You get a single atom in your body 20, 30 years later because it sequesters in your organs, your muscles, and your bones. It's electrically charged. It's pulsing out gammas, betas, and alphas. And what that does is destroy your DNA and your chromosomes and the white blood cells and the red blood cells are displaced in your body that are carrying the oxygen throughout your body by the white blood cells that are kamikaze for decades trying to contain build a sarcophagus around a single atom in your body. We have, like Dr. Raymond Gilmetti studies, until you can come up, until you can tell me that Dr. Raymond Gilmetti studies and all the other scientists that produce those studies are irrelevant and that you found that they all lied, they didn't kill the dogs, they were just making it up, huh? Then you got to listen to what I'm saying, not what freaks are telling you. You got to think about the reactors. This is mixed oxide fuel. This is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And that the biggest part of the Navy's budget is from the nuclear. And that for the Navy to take a few hits, saying they're responsible for killing some of the whales and porpoises and sea lions, not Fukushima, it's just good strategy, it's good chess. They can take a few hits because they get billions and billions and billions of dollars a year and trillions a decade for their nuclear rearmament. They got, remember, they've got to resupply the tritium every 12 years in the weapons. So all those old Cold War, Cold War weapons, to keep them active, they've got to replace the tritium because that's part of that trigger, right? The plutonium trigger they were creating at Rocky Flats were highly dependent upon the tritium too at the same time for that all to work. And tritium, of course, we, I showed you the studies earlier about leukemia uh, way back in the day. But if you go looking very far down nuclear and you stay away from people like Woods Hole who's going to tell you like a banana and a potato chip and walk in the sunshine and getting on an airplane and sleeping next to somebody, uh, you know, these are disgusting. These are disgusting people. These are de demented, twisted, sick people that make a living by coming out every chance they get and telling you that story, telling you that lie. And I do believe with my, after listening to Sophie, a number of her one hour uh, interviews, is that uh, she is part of that system too. And that's disgusting to turn her back on everything out there around her so she can get a paycheck. So she can probably get some little fame on the internet and sell some shit on the side, make a few bucks. Don't care about life. Just blame it on the, blame it on the Navy that it extinct everything on the west coast of Canada and the United States. No, that was the Navy, Dana. That kill all the, that's why all the birds would come ashore and there'd be no squid or anything. No herring anchovies or anywhere along the coast and they come ashore and eat that. They come ashore and eat that, right? They come ashore and eat that at low tide, at low tide. They just come in, pig out on that, pig out on that. I'm sorry, pig out on that. Wherever they want to. They can't come in and pig out on that. That's why they, half a million of them a few weeks ago started to death. That's why we see all the whales that died. They didn't die of air junk being busted or whatever. They, they went from 12 inches of blubber to four. Let it go, Dan. Okay, so let's get on with some other stuff because I'll just snap here if I'm not careful. But this is what the ocean looks like now. It's hemorrhaging into the ocean all day, every day, nonstop from those who have Let's go through some headlines for you. Maybe wrap your mind around something at some point here. Let me see what I got here. I'm not even sure what I got here. That's Tevco. Ah, Benny Four looks like this. It, it never got destroyed. Dana's lying to you. Yeah, but they're all the official pictures. You got to make up your own mind. When I show you the official pictures, think about the lawyer. Afghanistan, 10,000 Taliban, gangbangers, you shoot them, they're going to die just like you died if you got shot. They're not, they're not kryptonite. But for 10,000 people, we wrecked how many countries? And I'm not saying like we beat them up a bit. I mean we, we leveled them. You know, they fired 5.5 million rounds a month every month for nine years to get 10,000 Taliban. 
Do you think that the Navy really cares about taking a hit for killing some whales and seals? No, blame us. We get to fire 5.5 million rounds a month with the government to get 10,000 gangbangers. Yeah, blame us for anything you want. We don't care. We're going to fire five. Hell, they raped 290,000 of their own 29,000 a year over 10 years. Why would you believe anything the Navy told you in the first place? Raping 29,000 of their own every year in the military during the, during the last 10 years. 22 veterans committing suicide every day. That's 80,000 over the last 10 years. to get 10,000 gangbangers. Raped 290,000 of their own. To, uh, over 80,000 committed suicide. to get 10,000. How many did they rape in the countries they occupied? If they raped 290,000 of their own. How many? Yeah, but Muslims are bad, Dana. You're not for supporting that. 5.5 million rounds a month to get 10,000 people. You got any idea of how bad a shot you really are? 20,000 drone strikes over in India to get the same 10,000? Yemen, Somalia, you wrecked the planet, you're groping 700,000 kids a year to get the same 10,000 Taliban? I'm going to have a cigarette. My cigarettes don't got 9,000, 7,000 chemicals. There's another lie for you. Nicotine will give you cancer. No, they don't. Not a single study. But I bet you if they studied, the, and they've been trying, but I bet you if they studied the 7,000 chemicals in a cigarette, why well, don't got it? Danny, you're bad. You're smoking cigarettes. Can't watch Danny. You smoked a cigarette. That's what they'll say. Don't watch him. He smokes cigarettes. You can't trust a guy who smokes cigarettes. They put that comment in my videos when I was on the ocean all the time. I wasn't there to defend myself. You can't trust any smoked a cigarette. So I explain myself every fucking time I light up a cigarette. Hang on, I got some really doozies for you. Don't drink the rainwater. Oh Jesus, you're trying to say that it oh what? That it why the radiation falls out of the rain? Would that fall into the ocean and kill all the species in the ocean? No, it only kills beagle dogs and beagle puppies, Dana. Don't drink the rainwater. Uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction. March the 30th. Yummy. Iodine 131. Say they love, they love telling you about iodine. But anybody who repeats it is very gullible and very naive. You talk about iodine 129. There was 220 million Beckwells a liter of rain after Fukushima over North America, over Canada, Simon Fraser University. Per liter, 220 million with a 15 million year half-life, not an eight-day half-life. So, Fia and all the other puke machines out there. But here's the evidence. That's the evidence. And that, you don't need to go look. You know the tracer came through. Then you know the uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium, curium all came through too. Independent French Radiation Commission warns Europe, no longer eligible. U.S. West Coast at eight to ten times more than the contamination. It stretched right across the ocean. Still does. It's invisible. You can't see it, smell it, taste it here. No, don't worry about that. Worry about the Navy testing, Dana. For somebody who's making a buck, tell us. And we sound pretty cool. It sounds not as scary as radiation. It's not Fukushima, Dana. Cesium and iodine both at 600%. Well, gee, if they're the tracers and they're at 600%, what are all the other stuff I wonder that they don't tell you about? They, they delayed it because... They figured they wouldn't have a pension and that they're mass murderers and that they're scum of the earth. They were hired to do the job to warn you and when it happened they didn't warn you because they were worried about a panic. They were there so you wouldn't have to panic so you would be able to tell them where to go and how to get out of their shelter in the place. I'd fucking strangle every one of you if I caught hold of you. Every one of you. I hang you. I like to hang on to the rope and feel you shaking at the bottom of it. Who done that? TEPCO needs to check if high radiation doses are spreading everywhere. Woo! Five sievers will kill you. Right on the spot. Johnny Spot. You're dead. It's like 500 Rankins, right? Fatal radiation levels. Yeah, 10 sievers is fatal. Make no mistake, it's fatal. There's pieces blown all over that site like that. That's why they send in the homeless, the destitute, and the immigrants. That's why you won't see Harvard or Yale or Berkeley or MIT, MIT or, or hand, hand for, um Stanford or any of the shakers and movers on the planet there because that stuff is all over the fucking site. That's why they send in the homeless. And that's why you never hear from them. Think about this. How all the media come out 
and showed you the little beautiful picture on your right hand side. I superimposed all that, but here's what the buildings actually look like, right? There's Seth Dorn inside of it. Think about this. Inside of the building on your right is the one on your left. How friggin' gullible are you to think that that is true? Well, the media all come out and told you that, didn't they? Media all come out and showed you. Here's the pictures I put alongside of it. Think about all the media coming out and telling you all the big media, showing you a beautiful fuel pole, and then I put the pictures there of the destroyed buildings to really articulate it. Just like Sophia is the same way. She needs to come up and apologize and take her stupid fucking sight down at the same time if she wants any credibility back. She needs to come on board and tell the truth that she's been manipulated and taken money from the system. Or said she's stupid and she didn't know. One or the other! In order to save her soul and so that her friends won't turn on her in the near future when they find out what she fucking done. People find out her loved ones and friends and family that she was a puke machine, it's going to be really bad. It's better if she come out and say she was stupid and that she took everything down because she was stupid and had no idea what a melted reactor was really like. But I listened to her. She's not stupid. She can do her research. So why didn't she? There's people like that are fucking everybody else on the planet. Renewed nuclear chain reaction fuel to reactor four. No shit. All of the stricken reactors and spent fuel contain plutonium. All of them. No, Dina. They were the tallest, Dina. Nuclear is clean and green. Too cheap to, to meet her, Dina. The die-offs are from the nuclear, or from the, the sonar, Dina. I got 14,000 hours. I've worked with an unimaginable amount of Navy SEALs, for Christ's sakes, as my deckhands. I've heard every story you can imagine. That's not what killed the marine life. That's not what caused that devastation. That's not what's killing the Pacific Ocean. That's not what's wrecking our planet. That's not what's killing our children. That's not what killed all the insects in the forest all along the coastline. That's not what destroyed all the, all the spiders along the coastline of British Columbia last year. They're all gone. That's not what got rid of over 300 species of birds. Emaciated all the whales. Emaciated all the sea lines and right from Alaska right down to the Atlantic on the northern seaboard. That's not why we got hundreds and hundreds and thousands of nuclear PR firms saying it's like a banana and a potato chip and walking in the sunshine. Is that because it is because it's not? Ask Dr. Raymond Gilmetti if radiation is like a banana and see where your started his own chain reaction. See, Unit 4 was the big fable, wasn't it? Right? Every time you see Unit 4, I'm sorry, every time you see Unit 4, think of that one. <laughs> think about that one. They told you it's like that, but it's inside of that building. They never told you that, did they? But they did go and walk around and tell you that's what it looked like. Now he's walking around in that building. That's Seth Dorn from CBS. Miles O'Brien done the same thing. Tevco one month ago come out and showed us that beautiful picture. Right? He showed us this picture there. Yeah, we got all the fuel rods out of it, but it looks like death. I got a feeling we're at the end of the show, Eric. 11.24. Jeez. 55 minutes. Kind of like that. Must have had a bit of pent-up anger inside of me today. No, because I listened to Sophia, and I read Yoshi's reply to her. And I went over and I watched uh, three of her full videos and a half of another one. And I read around on her site, and I said, you know what? I'm going to come out, and I'm going to explain to people that this person is being deceptive. And... By using eight day half life, not only did she muddle the water beyond recognition, all the people who took her advice went ahead and ate the seafood and she killed them ultimately. All those children that died from taking her advice because her parents took their parents took her advice and ignored the, the clear and present danger. So Sophia has the distinction now forever of being a mass murderer. That's exactly what the host of the radio show was and her because he propagated the same lie. 
No one bothers saying, hey, wait a second, there's three melter reactors, so it is significant. Never even gave you that much. Just upright, outright, in your face, ball face, blame everything on that. Not Fukushima. Not. That's what she said. That's the way she said it. In a nutshell, isn't it? She needs to take down her site and apologize for being stupid or being a lawyer and tell the truth. Immediately. You're murdering people every day you leave it up. We will know if you're a murderer by if you leave it up. Everybody send this video to her. Everybody send this to her over and over and over until she takes the fucking site down. If you go watch this a year later and her site is still up, send it to her again. That's right, Shanikin. What is with you? Hugs for everybody. Yes, yeah, two angry days in a row. Not cool. Checks and balances, but these fucking lawyers, these sacks of shit getting a paycheck to come out and fuck over everybody. To wreck our planet because they can get a paycheck and get some traction out there and got a network that'll pop them up there. You pricks. Disgusting. You maggots. You parasites. You vultures. You fucking predators. Fuck off. Get a real fucking job, you cunts. Excuse the language, girls. No offense. I'm from Newfoundland. My mother used to use the word sometime. It's okay. I'm allowed to do it once in a while. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Chris, Pam, White Sparrow, Shani Ken. Everybody, Shani. I never got everybody's emails yet. I'm burnt out. I barely made it into this stream this morning, which is anger really drove me this far. I wasn't even going to stream this morning, but by the time I finished listening to the last one of Sophia... Small storm, I was like, Phew. I probably shouldn't share the video, it's too late because I'm going to. Spiral X ray, everybody hugs, am thirst, nip killer. I know I missed everybody, lots of people here I'm not going to get to. And I do come in and read the comments most of the times, by the way, I probably shouldn't tell you that, but I do. That's who I am. And I learn all the time, I learn about people. And, I, and, you know, I'm just a manifestation of you. That's why I exist. That's why I, I am. That's who created me, was you, you people. You, you're the people who supported me and stood strong and tall and morally and researched yourselves, the things I say. And you come to the conclusion that I don't lie, I don't fabricate, I don't misrepresent, I don't misconstrue it. That I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really thoughtful on how I think things through before I open my mouth, and I only talk about the things I'm really sure of, and I have 25,000 supporting documentations, of, and I only choose the best usually. And so what I bring to the table is unique. We've got 260 days on the ocean. That's funded by people all over the planet because that's what they want it done, and that these shows are here as a legacy of what we have already accomplished and what we are fighting for is the truth and that will prevail ultimately. I'm Dana Durnford, the nuclear proctologist.org. You can find these live streams at livestreaming.com seven days a week, five days a week, it might be seven days because the lawyers won't go away. Hugs for everybody. We'll put this up at YouTube in uh, about three hours, high quality, 1080. And I'll see everybody tomorrow morning, Friday for the fifth show of the week, 1030 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hugs for everybody.